Today, a big announcement or endorsement in a race with major implications for our region. Yeah, two former governors of our state, both Democrats, throwing their support behind a Republican in the race for Seattle City Attorney. Ann Davison earning the endorsements of former governors Christine Gregoire and Gary Locke. Both cited what they believe are the extreme views of Davison's opponent, police abolitionist Nicole Thomas Kennedy. Fox 13 political reporter Brandy Cruz joins us now. So, Brandy, why did these particular endorsements stand out so much to you? There are a variety of reasons, but definitely uh, the political world in Seattle, and I think the state is abuzz with these. One, this is the first time I've really seen, at least in my career here for a decade, the Democratic establishment really come out and forcefully reject a progressive candidate as being too fringe, and to do so in favor of a Republican candidate. The other thing is, is when you have two governors, former governors, weighing in on a race like this, it really tells you how important the race is. And when you think about all the things that have been happening in Seattle over the past couple of years, uh, repeat offenders, issues, uh, severe issues with mental health, homelessness, drug abuse, the intersection of all of those things in our criminal justice system, the debate over defunding police, um, all of these things are kind of coming to a head. And you really start to understand, and I said this before the primary, I believe this race for Seattle City Attorney is the most important race happening in the state. Even though Seattle's electing a mayor, I believe that this race has deeper implications. So you have Ann Davison, who ran for lieutenant governor last cycle uh, and lost, but ran as a Republican. This is a nonpartisan race, but people still know that she identifies as a Republican. And then you have abolitionist Nicole Thomas Kennedy. She has come under uh, intense scrutiny for tweets of the questionable variety. I, uh, I told Dave I'd pull a couple up this hour, and uh, he, here's a few. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but this is just from December of 2020 when she told police officers in the city to eat some COVID-laced blank. You can fill that blank for yourself and quit your jobs. Another one at the height of the riots last year, you'll remember when people lit some construction trailers on fire. She said, yay, thank you to the heroes that set the children's jail on fire. I spoke earlier with former Governor Greg War, who says these tweets and many others are indicative of why she believes Nicole Thomas Kennedy is not fit for public office. The city of Seattle is probably, without question, the most progressive city in the state of Washington. And with that comes some very progressive idealism that I respect, to be perfectly honest with you. What I can't uh, sit there and let go by is a person who believes in anarchy, that to property destruction is a moral imperative, that all police are, are, are serial killers, uh, that the United States Supreme Court is illegitimate and who hates our country. That, I think, is a pivotal moment in the future of Seattle where we have to get the right person at the helm, and I think Anne is that right person, and can represent all those on the left, in the middle, and what few there may be on the right. And one of the things the former governor told me is she said, you know, I don't really make endorsements. Uh, and she said that this is certainly the first time she can ever remember endorsing a Republican. I should note we did reach out to uh, Thomas Kennedy's campaign to see if she would respond to this endorsement. Uh, we haven't heard back from her yet, but we will share that with you uh, when we hear from her. I would also note, you know, she said some things about these tweets, uh, not only to us, but to other news organizations. You know, Hannah Kim, our reporter Hannah Kim, had asked her about a tweet where she called property destruction a moral imperative. And Nicole Thomas Kennedy he told her that, that it was a joke, despite mm -hmm. it obviously not being a joke. Uh, and she said to other media outlets that the tweets were taken out of context or she made them before she decided to run for political office, none of which, one, makes any sense, or two, has any bearing on the fact that she said these things. They're not tweets from five years ago, mm -hmm. ten years ago. They're tweets from, in some cases, just a few months ago. So I think it's one thing if she wants to go all in and say, yes, I believe these things, I'm running as an abolitionist, I'm proud of it, but to gaslight voters by saying it was a joke when she has many, many tweets of that variety. That's just not realistic. Yeah, so much on the line with the selection. Be interesting yes. going forward, Brandy. Yep. Thank yep. you.